Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Greetings. Welcome to Swayam Prabha DTH 16 channel. My name is Ariba Shabbir and we have been discussing English language teaching. So far we have studied many methods and now we are going to talk on content based, task based and participatory approaches. But before we go ahead, like always we will recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, we discussed communicative language teaching that involves teachers to look closely at what is involved in communication. Besides, we learned that if teachers intend to help students to use the target language, they must truly understand all that being communicatively competent that it entails. A variety of language form is presented at a time and we also got to know that uh, there is a method called blended uh, method of language teaching and it includes all the methods of language teaching. Besides, we learned that it is one of the appropriate uh, models because it requires the uh, knowledge of all the methods and it helps a teacher to have a deep understanding of all the methods so that he or she can apply a right approach at a required time. Now, since we are going to talk on content based uh, task based and participatory approaches, we will be able to understand these uh, approaches with respect to their techniques and principles. Besides, we will get to develop general understanding of the three approaches to language learning and teaching pedagogy. So, now the question comes that what is content based instruction? And uh, Using the inductive approach, I will first try to demonstrate the example. So, like you know, uh, always we will have an experience of the English language teaching classroom and we will enter into the classroom where we will find a teacher and the students. So, are you ready? Let us go into the classroom. Here we are seeing some teacher, we are seeing some students who are sitting in the classroom and there is a teacher who is going to teach something. Now what happens is that this class is mainly based on two important topics. What are those topics by the way? These topics are quite familiar to students. So I am writing over here that familiar topic is going to be discussed with these students. Now the question is what sort of familiarity do you expect in this classroom? Uh, basically, we will try to figure out that what is the background of the students and on the basis of that background, we will try to frame the target language task or you can say the, uh, the content of the instruction is going to be decided uh, by the level as well as the background of the learners. Now, uh, since these students are from geographic background, so the teacher is using two important concepts and the teacher says that dear students, today we are going to talk on geography and we are also going to learn English language. And in the same way, the teacher goes up by saying that uh, we are somehow going to interrelate English with geography so that you find ease in understanding the geographic context and also you will be able to have a good grasp on language. Now students find it interesting and uh, after seeing their uh, uh, interest, uh, teachers ask the students, what do you know about the globe? The students find this question a little puzzling and then they ask, uh, do you mean uh, the globe, uh, the, the, the rotating globe, the circular globe and the similar responses were coming from students. Now see, uh, look up at this slide, the teacher is just putting up the question uh, and expecting the answers uh, that would go in different ways. 
and the students uh, will prompt out the answers that the globe is circular the globe is an object that helps us to understand the longitude latitude different countries the uh, uh, seas and the land and so on so teacher will now take up uh, take up the globe from the desk and will show it to the students see this is the globe and uh, many of you are correct since it is circular uh, since it incorporates uh, uh, information about latitude and longitude it has a variety of information for example about the countries about the land about the continents and about the sea and then students find familiarity with respect to the use of globe and its utilization in their English language class. Now, when they have a trouble in explaining a concept, the teacher supplies the missing message. So, teacher is working as a facilitator and uh, teacher is actually helping the students to supply the missing information. Now, in the second scenario, we see that uh, uh, students have been given a handout. Now, what is this handout? What does it contain? Uh, by the way, since we uh, are knowing that students are getting knowledge on understanding globes, this handout is no other than that. It incorporates some words or uh, in a more technical term, I would say that this particular handout incorporates vocabulary items. And these vocabulary items are very much related to the geographical context. So, what could be the vocabulary in the geographical context? Suppose students have found that uh, there is a word written over there and it is mentioned as degree. Then they find that there is a word distance. Then they found uh, that equator is also mentioned. Globe is also mentioned. Hemisphere is mentioned. Okay. Uh, equator is mentioned. Uh, Let us say longitude, latitude, model and so on. So, this is pretty close to the fact that students are learning vocabulary items. Uh, they are getting to know the context and at the same time they are, they are building the language. So, language and their background both are interrelated and this content based approach utilizes this fact that students would learn in a better way if they are given the opportunity to use this language or learn the language from their own background to which they belong to. Now, take a, taking up the next scenario, we will see that uh, the teacher is giving another task and what is this task is the teacher is giving a closed test and this closed test is very popular in, in English language teaching pedagogy. It is popular just because of this content based methodology, but let us try to understand that how this closed test appears and how it is being utilized in content based methodology. Uh, let me tell you that there were some fill in the blanks in the passage that were given to students. And students were asked to write down the suitable word or the vocabulary they think is, uh, they think that the, uh, it would make it complete. Now, I am sure the students would come up with different responses and then they exchange their answers to their partners or their peer members and then they found the similarity or they could know that there could be different vocabulary that could be used over here. In this way, they built up their uh, uh, word uh, knowledge and uh, they find uh, uh, this technique quite easier. At the same time, they contribute to their vocabulary building. Now, after this what happens is that the teacher tries to open up a video and when we are seeing this class, we see that the video uh, is being played and after this video is uh, finished 
as they watch the video they are filling the remaining blanks of the closed test with the vocabulary words that the teacher has read aloud so after the video is over the students pair up to check the answers and the teacher calls attention to a particular verb pattern for example are located are called and is used and then teacher tries to explain that this particular verb is an auxiliary then this is a main verb and that this particular verb is helping or you can say supporting the main verb and so on so that's how the vocabulary item is developed in the content and we cannot ignore the fact that this is entirely based on the schema or the background knowledge of the learners and also their interest their profession their expertise now uh, moving on to the next scenario uh, the students play a guessing game now what is this guessing game isn't it interesting yes it is interesting let me write it down what is this guessing game in small groups uh, they think of the name of five cities let's say then they locate the city on the globe and write down the latitude and the longitude of that particular city uh, that how these two important co components coordinates and later they read the coordinates uh, uh, loud in the class and see if other students can guess the name of the city the first group says that the city is located at 5 degree north some say that it is 74 degree west some say that uh, 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 you know uh, it is 100 uh, that's that's how students get to know the process of uh, locating the cities and at the same time they are uh, building the knowledge they are also building the knowledge on the lines of the language structures and therefore they are producing the output in the language uh, in the target language in the meantime what we see is that the teacher keeps roaming into the class and uh, reminds students the groups that they are supposed to speak in the target language only and therefore there was a less or almost no use of the native language so dear learners let us try to quickly see our observations in the form of points so here is the slide at first we saw that the class is studying geography and through geography the class is building up a language the second point to be noted here is that teacher asks the students what they know about the globe so query is uh, being taken up and the teacher is the person who is asking about the globe and then we see that students call out their answers and uh, the teacher writes them on the blackboard so teacher writes the responses the other thing is is that teacher supplies the missing language so a supply of missing language takes place and when the students have trouble in explaining the concept in the target language the teacher facilitates the important information the point number 5 which i am mentioning in the slide is that the teacher reads the new vocabulary and then students watch out a video entitled understanding globes so video is being taken up in this classroom and uh, uh, video is used as a tool to help the student understand the concept more deeply so video is also used we also realize that students uh, filled the vocabulary words in the uh, blanks so close test is encouraged in content based and uh, then we saw that students uh, took out students use the appropriate vocabulary word and filled the blanks 
then the other point which is to be mentioned over here is that the teacher provides number of examples. So, number of examples are used using the latitude and longitude and then students were encouraged to locate uh, the specific city and then uh, students explain that how they are finding out a particular area. So, number of examples are being used in this particular task. The other point to be mentioned here is that the students are given uh, the uh, content like the globe and they have to come to the front of the classroom to find out the city of the globe. So, it is not the globe that it was not that the globe was provided to each and every student rather one globe was there it was central to the entire classroom and each student was coming out uh, finding uh, the accurate place measuring its dimensions and then was sharing it to the class. So, again uh, the content sharing takes place. Now, let us try to understand what are the principles of content based approach. Uh, while looking up at this slide, uh, the subject matter content is used for language teaching purposes. The second thing is that teaching should build on students previous experiences. So, if you are coming across with science students and you are giving a topic which is not familiar to them or maybe a new to them, then it would be difficult for them to articulate what is written. They would have to go deep uh, further and then they have to study it to uh, you know get a command over it. So, whatever their profession is and in whatever area they have been learning, they should be exposed to that kind of language. So, um, building a vocabulary or be it articulation of the ideas, it should be somehow related to the content that they have been uh, learning uh, so far. The teacher scaffolds a linguistic content that is helps learners say what is what it is they want to say by building together with the students a complete utterance. So, uh, you know teacher understands what they are thinking what are they trying to uh, say and how they are connecting each block of their knowledge to the other and how well their uh, linguistic components such as coherence, cohesion are interrelated, are their sentences interconnected, uh, are, they, uh, uh, are they able to produce uh, the sentences in a context or uh, are they able to uh, build knowledge one after the other. Are they able to build utterances one after the other? Now, the third point, fourth point as you see, vocabulary is easier to acquire when there are contextual clues to help meaning. So, this is contrary to the, uh, to the, to the grammar translation method, to the other methods that focuses more on, uh, you know, uh, learning in isolation. Uh, it is more close to the methods like communicative language teaching that says that vocabulary items or the grammatical sentences can be uh, learned when they are understood in social context. So, vocabulary becomes easier when you relate it or when you present it within a context, within a social system. If you present it in a isolation, then students would somehow memorize it. And here memorization is not asked, here memorization is not encouraged. What is more encouraged here? That students should use the context in order to understand the vocabulary and at the same time use it. Now, coming up to the next point, when they work with authentic subject matter, students need language support. So, uh, in order to articulate uh, their opinion, their knowledge and also what they have made out, uh, what is the output, they should have uh, a language support, right. They might have a good idea. And they might know the process, how it can be done, but if they do not find the words to articulate, then uh, they would feel themselves challenged. Uh, 
So, in order to support them, it is important to have a better language understanding of their context, of their uh, background. And for example, the teacher may provide a number of examples that build in some redundancy, use comprehension checks, etc. And by doing these kind of exercises, a teacher would be able to check where their students stand. Now, the next point is that learners work with meaningful cognitively demanding language and content within the context of authentic of authentic material and task so here authenticity plays a major role and uh, often we see that uh, while coming into classroom we bring materials but there is a question that which material should be chosen or what kind of material should be presented to the learners? Is it going to be authentic or is it going to be vague which is not uh, coming under the category of authentic? So, if we bring the uh, content which is related to the area, it will help them to learn through an authentic material. Now, the last point that I am mentioning over here as mentioned in the slide as well, communicative competence involves more than using language conversationally. It also includes the ability to read, discuss and write about content from other fields. So, this method purely encourages communicative competence and uh, uh, conversation is also encouraged. Since the conversation is happening in two way, so communicative competence is something which is really encouraged in content based approach and uh, uh, it, uh, it mainly includes the ability to read, discuss, have conversation, write about the content, discuss, put arguments and so on. Now, we are moving to another uh, approach and this approach is task based instruction. This looks quite familiar because it is interrelated to the language teaching pedagogy that we had gone through and that was communicative language teaching. But before we go through the task based instruction, let us again go into a classroom and experience that how it works. So, in the uh, task based instruction, uh, we see that uh, a teacher draws columns. And uh, at the head of the first column, the teacher writes 930 to 1015. Okay, the students understand that the teacher has written the duration of the first class period. So, somehow the discussion is going to take place around the timetable, timetable of the class. Now, in the second column, when she is about to write, the teacher asks, uh, pointing uh, to the student that, uh, what do you think should I write now? The student immediately replies that the time uh, would be 10 15 and then 11 o'clock. This goes up in AM. Now, the teacher asks who will write the names for the days of the week. So, several students raised their hands. The teacher calls one by one on uh, one student and says, "Come and uh, write down the names of each weekday." So the student uh, draws uh, a line over here and made a column. In fact, added a row and puts up Monday, and then the student puts Tuesday, and then Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and so on and she does not mention Saturday. So, the student asks other students who are sitting in the class, they ask what about Saturday? Are we not going to have class on Saturday? The teacher replies, no the class is not going to be held on Saturday. Saturday and Sunday will remain closed. So, 
in the entire scenario we have been observing that students are taking active part in it and at the same time they have been doing a task and what is the task is about the task is to make a timetable okay and then the teacher asks each student uh, to work in a group and uh, form a timetable which is more suitable to you so students found them students uh, made a group uh, uh, having 3 to 4 members and then they started working out on the number of class during the number of classes and the class durations so at first they would like to study mathematics in the second period they would like to study uh, english in the third period they would like to study social science and then they would like to have a recess and so on so each student or you can say each a group has put up the preference again teacher goes up into the classroom uh, listens to the conversation of each group and motivates the students to speak in the target language now here again it is important to note that this particular observation tells us that learning can also be achieved when it is performed in tasks now this task is not consigned to only timetable again i repeat this task is not consigned to timetable rather it is more uh, inclined to the real life things uh, where you can uh, uh, expose yourself into different situations into different challenging tasks and then uh, you find uh, other members discussing uh, different challenges and therefore uh, the conversations are taking place ultimately the goal is getting accomplished what is the goal the goal is to learn language now this is interesting to note that uh, task based syllabus is not new it has been in practice for decades but the way it has been put up and uh, the way it is engaging the students is really admiring and uh, uh, many teachers encourage students to perform tasks they give in a task in the form of assignments and therefore language learning is achieved so dear learners now let us try to uh, put our observations in points so at first as i'm using this slide i'll try to make up here at first the students make out that timetable making is taking place so they could at least analyze that the task which is going to be taking place is of timetable making the second thing that uh, we observed in the example was that the teacher begins by having the class help uh, begin to fill out a class schedule so this is done through whole class interaction in the form of question and answer and discussion so uh, class help takes place and uh, students are paired in groups and uh, they interact interaction is taking place and then they have questions and answers followed by discussions and so on so since the students are trying to put up the timetable to the best of their convenience so they are discussing and they are trying to bring the optimum result now the third observation that we made in this example was that the teacher first has the students label the time periods right so first the duration was mentioned like 10 15 to 11 30 and then for so on so you know when the time period was given it was pretty understood that the teacher breaks down into smaller steps what is br being bro uh, broken down it is the task so basically task is divided into fragments and therefore it is pretty clear that first the duration was mentioned then the teacher asks the student to come up uh, in front and uh, uh, label uh, each duration with 
a day. So, student came and said that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and so on. The next point to mention here is that the teacher asks the students if a particular answer is right, then students respond to it. In addition, we notice that uh, students came up with the questions like what about Saturdays? Are we not going to have class on Saturday? So, uh, teacher replied that uh, we may not have class on Saturday, uh, both the days Saturday and Sunday will be closed. So, in this way we saw that the conversation took place between the students and the teacher. Okay. And then, uh, you know, uh, there are some other observations also that I think are important to mention here that students uh, when they do the task in groups, the, they follow the teacher's instructions. So, following up the instructions. Now, the concern here is that what were the instructions or what was the level of the instruction that were guiding the students. So, if you remember when the teacher was passing from one group to the other, was listening to the discussions, was answering to the questions, she had instructed the students to use target language only and not the native language. So, in this way she was encouraging them to use language and that is how she wanted the students to develop language proficiency. Now, the next point uh, which I am mentioning here as an observation is that, uh, uh, that, that uh, students were asked to design the survey and they were asked to design the timetable and through such task they were able to figure out a way to report their findings. So, it was not merely a language learning task, but a complete activity or a complete challenging task was accomplished. So, two things have been done that is learning and the second thing is the problem solving. So, it has become important to understand that learning can be achieved by uh, learning by doing and learning by solving complex problems. And this is one of the apt examples of doing that. So, dear students, let us try to understand the principles of task based language learning approach. And like in this slide, it is mentioned that the class activities have a perceived purpose and a clear outcome. So, when you design a task, you should always remember that you have a certain goal to achieve. And by you, I mean that your student should be able to reach to a certain point. So, like in the example, we understood that how timetable is being done by with the help of uh, students. Similarly, you can give them other real life tasks. Okay. Uh, for example, you can ask students to make a video on any activity of your choice. Okay. And in this activity, in this video, you can uh, take an interview of, um, of, a, of, 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 a, of a person who has uh, done cleanliness of the road or you can, uh, you can talk to environmentalist and discuss the benefits of the environment. So, in such context, students will find enthusiasm and at the same time, they will be able to record their responses and they will have uh, an opportunity to gain knowledge. Now, the second point as it is mentioned here is that a pre-task in which students work through a similar task to one that they will later do it individually is a helpful way to have students see the logic involved in and what they are being asked to do. It will also allow the language necessary to complete the task to come into play. So, when they are doing an activity and they are uh, making this activity to learn uh, language, they will be able to find themselves involved into the task and at the same time, the language which is required to complete the task will also be practiced. The third point as mentioned in the slide says that the teacher breaks down into smaller steps the logical thinking process necessary to complete the task. The demand on thinking made by the activity should be just above the level which learners can meet without help. 
So, uh, like in the timetable, we have the process. So, at first, note down the timings, then the second is, is about um, uh, uh, noting down the number of days and also the name of the days and so on. So, you can uh, break the task into segments and uh, in order to simplify the task, you can help the students to complete one task at a time, then move to the other. So, one thing which is pretty understood here is that we should move from simple to complex. And when we give them the level x and they are able to successfully achieve it, then we can give them x plus 1. This x refers to, I am writing over here, this x refers to the level of their students and x plus 1 is the, that 1 is added that is 1 point ahead of their capability. Now, coming up to the next point, the teacher supplies the correct target form by reforming or recasting what the students have said. Students should receive feedback on their level of success in completing the task. The overall focus is on meaning. So, students perform the task, they discuss it, they bring it in front of others, they engage themselves in the conversations, they find themselves in an enthusiastic discussion, but this is not sufficient. What makes the classroom complete is that a teacher should provide feedback and feedback should not be missed. Students should be given the opportunity to reflect back and that is what is important here. So, the last point is that students have input into the design and the way that they carry out the task. This gives them more opportunity for authentic and meaningful uh, interaction. Since the tasks are real life based and uh, they are more encouraged uh, from something that they are familiar with. So, this gives them to think critically, positively and at the same time their interaction happens in a more meaningful way. Now, the last uh, approach in language teaching is participatory approach. Now, the point is, what is participatory approach? Have you ever heard of this particular approach? Again, in order to understand this, we will adopt a method of inductive language teaching. So, now let us look up at uh, the real life example of the participatory approach, how it is implemented in language teaching is classroom. I am using this slide to demonstrate the observation. Uh, let us see that uh, uh, the students are the immigrants. And uh, where they are settled, they are Indians and they are settled in United States. Now, the point to be noted here is that the learners are adults who work part time during the day and the uh, and study english at night so they work during day and study english at night So, it simply means that in order to survive there or in order to uh, do uh, important livelihood activities, they need to learn English. Uh, the fact that not to be ignored here is that they are adult learners. Now, uh, at 8 pm, the class starts. The teacher is there who is a native speaker of English and the teacher uh, say greets everybody. Students reply. And uh, when we are observing the classroom, we see that the teacher asks the students what did they do in the last week and uh, do they have in and they, there was also a question that do they have any experience uh, if they have any problem with regard to uh, with regard to the with regard to the stay in United States, what are these problems or any experience that they would like to share in the classroom with their peer members? 
so we see that the, they are adults and they are working during day and they are studying English. The teacher comes into the classroom and teacher asks everybody how are they doing, uh, what did they do in the weekend and what are their plans. The, teach, the students were discussing, so the conversation is taking place between the students and also between the student and the teacher. Uh, what we observe that so one of the student raises his hand and says that uh, there is a problem that I faced in the last week and the problem is that he has been having a problem with landlord. So there is a discussion that takes place with regard to problem. Then he discusses the problem that uh, he is currently running out of funds and therefore uh, the landlord is not considering any, the landlord is not considering the problem and is asking him to leave the place. However, um, after knowing the details, the landlord got convinced and he later uh, allowed the person to stay. Uh, then we see that one of the students say that there is there was a big news that he received uh, last weekend and that news was that his brother got into a famous university into uh, into into the United States. So here the student is sharing excitement. And then the students came one by one and they demonstrated their problems, they uh, shared their worries, they expressed their interest, they also talked about the excitements that have happened in the last, in the, in the week, in the last weekend. Now we see another scenario and in this scenario it is interesting to show that teacher brings up a picture and you will be surprised to know that this picture thing is something that we also analyzed in communicative language teaching. But here the approach is slightly different. The teacher brings a handout of uh, in this handout there is a picture. The picture contains uh, a child, a child who is standing on one of the floors of a building and there are other uh, students of similar age, they are in the field and they have been playing football. The child who is of the age of 8 to 9 years old is watching, is watching these students playing football. Now the teacher asks the students, what do you think is in the mind of this child? Students came up with varying answers. Some student says that because uh, this child is not well, so he is quite amazed to see other students playing the football. He wanted to come down, and uh, but he couldn't. So there were varying responses. One of these students mentioned that uh, uh, this child is not well and he is unable to take part with his peer members. So he is trying to enjoy from his building. One of these students mentioned that because of the restrictions that were imposed by his parents, he is unable to attend his peer members who are uh, playing football in the ground. The other person mentions that um, this child is not interested in football, but he is trying to make out what is happening and he is getting some kind of interest and therefore he is figuring it out how this game is being played. So what I am trying to tell you here is that there are number of reasons. And uh, we also realize that uh, perceptions would also vary. So, one situation which is perceived as 6 may be perceived as 9 to other. So, here uh, let us try to look up at this uh, image again. Here students are thinking and they are putting up their language. So, thinking and articulating. So, in this way there are 
two important happenings first that the mental exercise is taking place. So, I am writing here is that mental exercise is taking place and second is that uh, students are finding a way to express their opinions and how they are finding it by articulating the right language. So, language use is also noticed here. In this way, we realize that uh, learning is taking place, students opinions, perceptions are being expressed and they have got a chance uh, to answer the questions that are being asked by, by the teacher. Let us try to look up at the principles of the participatory approach. The first point as mentioned in the slide says that what happens in the classroom should be connected with what happens outside also that has a relevance to the students. So, this line simply states that there should be a connection between the students age, their uh, uh, interest and uh, they should get the picture or they should get the situation which is related to them. Uh, this will help them to draw inferences in a better way because they have already built a schema of it. Now, when I say schema, I mean background knowledge. So, the second point says that the curriculum is not a predetermined product, but the result of an ongoing context specific problem posing process. The third point is that education is most effective when it is experience centered, when it relates to students real needs. Uh, you know in the example where we, uh, uh, where we saw that the teacher is showing a picture to the students, we realized that students were somehow narrating their own experiences, they were relating it with their own real life context and that is how they were perceiving that child. Similarly, uh, this point uh, is in relation with to that experience only that education is most effective when you relate it with experience and make it uh, besides learner centered that it should be experience centered as well. When knowledge is jointly constructed, it becomes a tool to help students find voice and by finding their voices, students learn to being politically correct. A uh, focus on linguistic form occurs within a focus on content. So, students can create their own materials which in turn can become text for other students. And a goal of the participatory approach is that for students to be evaluating their own learning and to increasingly direct it by themselves. So, they are the director of their task, they are the people who take part in it and they are the people who guide themselves, understand and reflect at the same time. So, that is how the language is being built and one of the important points to be noted here is that here language learning is not a part of memorization, here language learning is taking place by thinking in the target language. So, dear learners, now let us try to put our observations in points. At first, we noticed that the teacher engages the students in the discussion about what is happening in their lives. So, questions and answers take place. Moreover, these questions are based on real life. So, they were having ample opportunity to express their opinions. They were having the platform to discuss about their issues, their problems and therefore, they were finding the way to bring out the language. The second thing is that teacher leads the class uh, in discussing the problem. Okay. ending with students responding with solutions to the problem. And the third point which we observed in the example was uh, that if the teacher asks the students if they want to write a letter and therefore, the collaborative process started. So, collaboration is also a key in this approach. 
The second uh, observation that we did with respect to the picture was that uh, students were given the ample opportunity to express about the opinion with regard to the child. So, the child was standing at his house and was looking up at the field. So, opinion or you can say the perception was encouraged here. So, picture interpretation is mainly taking place in the second scenario. Hence, we can say that uh, the uh, participatory approach encourages the learners to find themselves into uh, the shoes of others and then visualize what can be done, what can be said and what can be achieved. So, participatory is not just one way, it is, it reflects the participation of various moods and by uh, finding oneself in different situations, one can eventually develop and build uh, effective language. So, I am mentioning over here that it gives an opportunity to think and reflect. So, the entire process of participatory approach or the content based approach or the task based approach, these three approaches uh, takes the learner to the level of uh, perception, to the thinking uh, process and then builds the language from their perspective. So, we can sum up this session by quoting uh, Larson Freeman who said that learning to communicate by communicating rather than by preparing to do so through practicing the various pieces of language is a different way to approach the goal of developing students communicative competence. So, the ultimate goal is to gain the communicative competence and how it is being achieved that is quite important. So, there are various methods and approaches that takes us to communicative competence, which one do you think is most appropriate, uh, that is something which you need to analyze. So, there are some uh, questions that I would like to put up here, you can use it as a reflection and uh, the first question that is being put up here is, can you see yourself applying this central notion in your teaching? Uh, and if yes, what is that central notion that you would like to use in your language teaching? Now, the second question which is being put up over here is that, is there any content that your students are interested in studying that they may prove to be useful medium for their language acquisition, per, uh, perhaps some special interest like music or sports in not an academic subject? If you are teaching language to physical science students, try to get some material which are more oriented towards sports. Similarly, if you teach uh, commerce students, get up some vocabulary items that are more related to their uh, field like commerce, like profit, demand, supply and so on. <clears throat> the last question that you see in this slide is that do you see the value of having issues if not problems that are relevant to your students lives? So, one of the important things that you should consider uh, while applying the methods of teaching language is to find out the issues, the challenges your students are facing. And uh, if they are finding any method interesting and at the same time it is successful, you can keep on moderating it. So, here are the references. With this, we have come to an end of this session. I hope you have learned uh, the three approaches that is content based, task based and participatory. With this, we have come to an end of this session. Thank you very much for joining.
Hello everybody, now uh, the discussion which I would try to um, make uh, talk to you is about the excitement which I always feel and I am sure you will also reciprocate as I proceed and when you do the course is in the area of multivariate statistical problems and multivariate statistical analysis. So, what we mean by multivariate? So, we know that statistics is a, is a subject where you ha have a lot of data, you try to analyze that using different type of techniques like estimation problem, MCMC techniques, then forecasting and the area of time series analysis and then try to basically find out the best forecasting tool which you have such that you are able to gain the maximum amount of information from a set of data. Now, in the recent past as we see that multivariate statistics has, has, has really increased in a, in, in a very exciting manner and if I trace back to history it has been going on slowly for the last about 70, 80 years, but now the time has come where it is being used in a very big way and the techniques which we all know, but which are being utilized with new vigor are in the area of say for example, canonical correlation technique, in the area of factor analysis, in the area of conjoint analysis, in the area of clustering analysis, in the area of multidimension uh, scaling techniques, structural equation modeling, be it in the area of finance, be it in the area of engineering, be it in the area of social sciences, be it in the area of economics, such that you are able to gather the the information from the data in such a way that it really gives you some useful set of information. Now, in the recent um, past, there has been also an explosion of large and complex data sets, but added to that there has also been a, a commensurate increase in the computing and the statistical techniques. So, obviously, the question comes that if the statistical techniques are there for small, so called small data, not the big data, not the, the, the data which is of terabytes and, and, and so on and so forth, where you use different type of computers to stay the data. The question obviously comes that are those statistical techniques really relevant when we use them in the big data sense. The question is they are not always relevant, they may not give you the best results. So, what we are seeing in years to come and, and I feel very excited about that is that how the new tools which we have already learned in statistics in multivariate statistical analysis are being redrawn, are being say for example, remodeled in such a way that they can be utilized along with the techniques of computing in a very nice manner that we are able to garner the information from big data very successfully and very nicely in such a way that they are able to portray a sense of information which we all long to have from big data, be it in say for example, medical sciences, be in the area of finance, be it in weather forecasting, be it in transportation, so on and so forth. So, obviously, it means that students, participants who are in a position with some brief mathematical background to take multivariate statistics and statistical tools as a subject in this program are assured are a very exciting future where they can use these tools to, to both gain the knowledge as well utilize them in a very best practical sense such that they are able to do some justice to the information which is given to them and get the best information from the data sets. I wish all the participants in this course the best of luck and I am sure they will also reciprocate the excitement which I have for this type of courses. Thank you.